Subject Shiphead Ulina Species Urakari Description Reptilian humanoid No tail 5 foot 3 1.6 meter average height 135 pounds 61 kilograms Average weight 105 year life expectancy Ship RSV Loelana Vice with honor Location Unknown Our ship had taken a beating But nobody can tell me where we are Our nav officer is down And probably isn't going to survive his wounds My second was already dead Head smashed in by a console detaching When we were hit by the first missile salvo my own head was reeling from the successive slipspace jumps we had just made. The first jump was to arrive at our destination, and the second was to escape the ambush that had awaited us. The second one was the problem. It had been done out of desperation. We had jumped blind with our shields. We have multiple hull breaches. Our faster than light drive is offline, and our engines are not responding, sir. The panic in the voice of Luna, my head of engineering, was palpable. Evacuate and seal the breach sectors. Initiate distress protocol and try to find out where we are. I managed to save through gritted teeth. This was supposed to be a simple scouting mission. Some warp irregularities that we were supposed to scan and report back on. Our shields didn't even have a chance to spool up before we had been fired upon by the Omni Union bastards. We had been hit hard, and the additional strain of an unshielded warp bloody caused even more damage. Sir, the ship that hit us was a destroyer class. My intel officer. Corinne, inform me. There's no way they were there by chance. That's not good, I replied. We need to inform the Republic as soon as we can. Speaking of which, where are we on a location? Corinne grimaced. Judging from our flight path, we're far beyond our borders. That's also not good. Well, we're also outside the OU's border, so it could be worse. Probably. I'll have more info when our sensors come back online. Jumping unshielded desynchronized them, Corinne frowned, as she glanced at the nav panels across the bridge. My nav officer, Koran, had been taken to the med bay. Corinne and Koran were hatchmates, siblings that burst into the world simultaneously. It's said that they have an unshakable bond, and as far as I've seen, that holds up. The odds of both of them being assigned to the same ship were slim to none, but they somehow made it happen. Their playful banter made the long treks into deep space less exhausting. I hope Karan makes it. His quick thinking has saved us. He had already calculated a blind jump by the time I gave the order. Luna interrupted my chain of thought. Shiphead, I have a more comprehensive damage report. Let's hear it. We're in a bad way. We have hull breaches in engineering, life support and the living quarters. These areas have been sealed off until we can enact repairs, but that will require a spacewalk. Luna grimaced. We've lost a lot of gas, and the pressurized reserves might not be enough to fully repressurize those sectors. Understood. As long as we don't have leaks, you can take your time formulating a plan. Not too long, though, or we'll run out of rations. I smiled at my little joke. Luna didn't. We also have no propulsional shields. Sublights on our FTLD are non responsive and vacuum exposed. I wouldn't be surprised if we were leaking radiation. But I can't confirm that without our sensors. Our shields are non-functional when our frame is damaged. We're going to need at least dry off for full repairs, but I think it's likely that the ship is totaled. This was far from the Lua Lana's maiden voyage. I've been the ship here for 12 years, but the ship had been in service for at least 30. She has started life as a corvette, but is now classified as a frigate. Relatively small for a warship, but faster than most I could pack a punch. As long as we got a swing in, at least. The lower Lana could fit a crew of up to 50, but operated best with a smaller crew. We had to part with a crew of 38, including myself. What's our casualties look like? I said, no longer smiling. Luna looked down at his data pass solemnly. Six dead. Ten critically injured, four unaccounted for. Twenty casualties. My heart sank. More than half my crew out of action and more than a quarter of them dead or MIA. I found myself spiralling and shook myself out of it. Half is better than all. Keep me updated on the status of the injured and missing. I'll notify the next of Kim when we're rescued. Speaking of which, how's the distress signal doing? It's beeping away, shiphead. 
Corinne said. And our sensors just came back online. We are definitely leaking radiation, Lumina. Anyways, I can pinpoint where we are now. Hopefully there's an exploration team within sensor range. The odds of that were low. Ever since the war with the Omni Union had begun, the Republic had been more focused on manning warships than exploring the cosmos. For good reason, though. The war hadn't been going in our favour. It seemed like for every OU ship we took out, another three took their place. We would managed to keep them out of the core systems, but we were firmly on the defensive. Ah, I spoke too soon, Corinne sighed. We're well out of range of anything Republic. No known life this far out. Looks like we're smack in the middle of a solar system, though. Maybe we can get some supplies for repairs. Let's see. A yellow sun? Eight planets? Oh! Four of them are gas giants. No worries about repressurization. I smiled sadly. That's good. Hopefully we can get what we need to limb back to rip- Fuck. Crane interrupted me. Shiphead, this solar system is inhabited. What? What? Corinne looked up at me. I'm showing signs of advanced colonization on two planets and several moons. Actually, one of the planets looks like a capital world. The entire surface is covered in artificial structures. Also, there are... A proximity alarm pinged. The first two notes were the same for every ship that approached. The second two determined if it was friend, foe, or unknown. In my 12 years of being shiphead, I had never heard those last two notes. Unknown. Luna rushed back to his console. Unknown vessel on approach, Corinne said, baffled. It's absolutely massive. Easy twice the size of any battleship I've ever seen. It has shields powered up, but doesn't appear to have its weapons armed. Not that we'd necessarily be able to tell, Luna said fearfully. I sat up straight and asked, Are comms online? Yes, sir. Hail them. They're hailing us, sir, Luna said. Do you want me to put them through? I nodded, and Luna set to work opening a channel. The sounds that came from our speakers were nonsensical and guttural. I looked at Luna in confusion. Uh, the channel is working. We'll need a minute for the translator to take effect, he explained. The next noise I heard nearly sent me into an early grave from shock. No need for that. We scanned your logs and extrapolated your language. I am Captain Reynolds of the USSS Thanatos. You seem to be in a spot above her. May we assist? Asked the voice from the speaker. It took me a second to remember how to speak. I am Ship Hedulina of the RSV Luolana. We come in peace and are in no position to turn down an offer of aid. It shall be done. Prepare to be boarded and welcome to Sol.